Springtime is one of the best times you can catch bass in the northeastern United States, but it can be extremely confusing to figure out what you should use to catch these bass. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of the best lures and rigs you could possibly use to catch the bass right before they're about to spawn. Most springtime bass fishing tutorials come from southern states like the Carolinas, Georgia, and sometimes even Florida. The fishing there is drastically different than in the northern states like Pennsylvania, New York, Maine even. These northern states, they're completely different. So today I'm going to be making it a bit easier for you to target these fish. My favorite lures for these springtime bass if you're fishing offshore are these lipless crankbaits. Red is the best color, but the second best is probably gold. Depending on what you have in your lake, you might even want to try one of these bluegill colors. If you're fishing shallow water flats, a blue jerkbait like this will help you a lot. These are one of my favorite baits for the spring, but sometimes people don't have shad in their lakes, and so that's when you might want to use a longer and bigger jerkbait like this. This is in a perch color. This is a really good color for lakes that don't have shad in it. My favorite topwater baits for evening fishing is the Whopper Plopper and the Walking Bait. These are super good for these springtime bass here in the north because most people in the south recommend frogs. I do not recommend frogs for fishing in the northeast, especially if you don't have lily pads. These are my favorite, especially the Whopper Plopper when you're burning the bank. If you are going to be topwater fishing, keep this in mind. If it's cloudy out, use a light colored bait, and if it's sunny out, use a dark colored bait. For soft plastics and the way to rig them, I recommend two different baits. The earlier you are in the season, you're definitely going to want to use a creature styled bait like the Bandito Bug. Now, if you're a bit later and the leaves start getting on the leaves, I definitely recommend a wacky rigged Sanko, preferably a five inch. As far as ways to rig these go, like I said for the Senko, you're definitely going to wacky rig it. And make sure you use an appropriate wacky rig hook for this. As for the creature bait, you're definitely going to want to go with the traditional Texas rig. I use a worm hook, a 1 4 ounce tungsten weight, and a bobber stop to keep that weight from sliding. This is a super good way to fish docks. One of my personal ways to fish out of all of these methods is the wacky rig. See, I have it rigged up here straight to the braid because these fish in my lake tend to not be picky. But if your fish are very picky, then definitely think about using a fluorocarbon leader. The way that I fish the wacky rig is mostly going up to docks like this and flipping it. I like the docks that have the barrels on them so you can actually get under it. If you don't get anything while you're fishing the docks, then definitely try just casting along the banks like this. See if you can get a fish setting up for a bed. Just like this one. Oh! Lost that one. I don't think he quite had it. Aww. Darn it. Snapped off. <laughs> oh boy. That's fun. Now we didn't get anything on the wacky rig, but I'm actually not surprised. We just had a cold front move in. And like I said, you want to use the wacky rig when it's a bit warmer out. So now I'm going to switch to the Texas rig. First step for this is you install the bobber stop. So you just thread that on like that. It's just on there. Put that back. Now you install your weight. Now tungsten weights are my favorite because they're so small. Um, but they are super expensive, so I don't always use them, especially on 
lakes or parts of the lake where I uh, on parts of the lake where I kind of expect I'm going to lose them. Um, yeah, you really don't want to be losing these little guys. They are extremely expensive. So there, you can see the bobber stop stops the weight from sliding up and down. Super simple. Now, I forgot the exact size of these hooks, but I'm pretty sure they're four odd. But I forgot the exact size. Alright, got the hook tied on, just cut the tag end. And then, what you do is you take that little red bobber stop and you slide it down. I slide it just a tad bit above the hook so but for now i am going to still install that that uh bug rig so or that bug on so uh i slide it up a little bit for that yeah so on most creature baits they're uh their appendages are like tied down, so make sure you break those, especially the claws like that. Okay, so we got that ready. Now, here's the time for the Texas rig. So basically, keep in mind that whichever side you want to face up, so this side you want the you want the bright side to face down. So keep in mind when you're rigging, you keep the fa the hook of the face or the, the the face of the hook up so like that and you get it how you want it and then you keep the hook still and you flip the bait and then you flip it upside down and that's how you install it and then you measure it so you measure how much of that goes on that part of the hook so once you have it like that then you insert it about that much poke it out okay and then now you flip it and pull it up so I know that is definitely confusing, but it's kind of just trial by air. So now you slide that up. You want this to look super clean, so I kind of tuck that in there a bit. And then you go further down here, and you bend it in a bit, poke it through. You want it to be as centered as it can, and it comes out like that. So there we go, that's a pretty good Texas rig. And now, last step, slide that down. So there we go, that is how I rig it. It's going to bounce along the bottom, really nice. So let's go try it. So with this, you're pretty much primarily gonna be flipping. So just expect that. Oh, here we go, little guy first cast now as you can see that stop will slide up sometimes so just bring that down there we go nice little bass there tiny guy so you can see he's been eating the crawfish by his pink lip there we go set the hook real nice there probably a little under a pound maybe a pound he's pretty thick so yep first fish of the day I knew that that was gonna work more. So there we go. <laughs> now, when you have these really gravelly parts of the bank, a little bit later in the year, normally once the leaves start showing up on the trees, uh, you'll get beds up in here. And this is also a super good rig to bed fish. You just bounce that along the bed and make the fish mad. Alright, I saw a fish under this. I have no clue what it was or how big it was. I just saw its tail kick around.
All right, another little guy. You do have to sort through all these little guys, especially depending on the lake you're in. To get to a big one, there is a lot of these little guys this time of year. But you can see, like I've caught both of these fish so far on structure. And that one, is that the same fish? No, this one's even smaller, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this lake uh, does have as many big fish as it has. It's got like four times of these little guys. So yeah, these are kind of all stunted fish, so that sucks. But yeah, as I was saying, all of these fish are coming off structure, so like I'm on a lay down right now. The other one was uh, was on a dock. There's target structure with these with these finesse rigs, and you'll likely get fish and logs. Probably bent this hook out. Oh, I didn't. Nice. Whoa, whoa, <gasps> there was a hole there. Oh my goodness, whoa. <laughs> well, I'm wet now. Pulled my foot out right away, so. I actually didn't get too much mud water in there. Hope you guys found today's video helpful, or at least enjoyed it. I know I didn't catch anything big in this video, so I know it was a little hard to enjoy. But that's just the way fishing goes sometimes, so this is the video you're going to get. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Um, I'm free to answer them. I love answering your questions, so please comment them. If you have them, don't be scared, even if you're a beginner fisherman. Uh, yeah, even just the basic questions. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.